Hi Santi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much for welcoming us uh, in Barcelona. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about you and the Fabla Barcelona we are here today? Yeah, so yeah, my name is Santi and uh, I'm architect. So I'm tutor of Fab Academy basically uh, and I'm uh, managing uh, Fab Lab Kids and uh, Pop Up Fab Lab, that is a mobile Fab Lab. Uh, and yeah, we are here. Uh, Fabla Barcelona, what you are seeing is the, our dirty part of the of Fab Lab, <laughs> and then we have the other one that is the clean part, that's yeah. where we make the Fab Academy seasons and you know electronics, the action, something. Great, and uh, this Fab Lab is uh, within a university, IAC. So, what, it, what does it mean for Fab Lab to be within a university? Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, it's very interesting because. Yeah, this university, the degrees of this university are basically focusing sustainability uh, in different yeah. scales. So it means that from city to the material, basically. And most of the students, they use the facilities of the Fab Lab to develop and uh, yeah, basically make their ideas reality. And what it creates is a lot of synergies and movement, and, you know. Uh, yeah. Every time is happening something for yeah. <laughs> here, like from the EX students or for the Fab Lab students. So it's nice. Great. And uh, earlier you told us about Fab Kid. So can you tell us a bit what you do with the kid here at the Fab Lab? Uh, yeah. So right, our idea. So we are, we are working into many different ideas. So one is, of course, do workshops for kids. Uh, and Basically, we work with schools or we create our own workshops for kids. Uh, and the other idea is like develop a kind of project, a program for for the kids for learning the digital fabrication topics for the kids, based on the kids, you know, more more accessible than it could be a program as Fab Academy. Great, Thomas. Hi. Thank you very much for welcoming Mekito in Barcelona. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and the places we are in today? Uh, I am a Venezuela-born urbanist. I studied urbanism, so I learned about cities. And then during the last almost 10 years, I've been working with digital fabrication. So my field of interest is the connection between cities and technology. That's why I guess I'm working on the Fab City project globally. And we are now at uh, IAG and the Fabla Barcelona which is uh, a fabrication laboratory, part of the Fabla network, but also is now the home of a new project we are launching, which is the Fab City Research Laboratory. Great, and uh, so how come you discovered this world of Fab Lab and you got involved into it? It was by coincidence. I was an intern here at IAC uh, back in 2006, and I got the task to set up a Fab Lab and talk to some people in the US uh, working place called the Center for Bits and Atoms at MIT yeah. and uh, I started to learn about Fab Labs and I said this is the way to change cities, is to change how we produce things and what's our relationship between uh, the things we produce and the things we consume. It's basically for me it's the, the key points to transform society. So that's why yes I was interested. Great, and so and we discussed about the fact that the Fab City is about places like Fabla Barcelona and Green Fabla, but also about projects like Smart Citizen. Can you yeah. explain to us a bit what it is about? Well, the, the Fab City is, is using the existing Fab Lab infrastructure in order to develop um, uh, projects or small interventions that can transform things in the larger scale. Um, so we think that the, you know, the Smart Citizen is a device, but when you, when you have many devices capturing data about the city, can you explain the devices? It's, a, it's an open source uh, Arduino compatible uh, sensor device 
that can measure uh, the noise pollution, the air pollution, the humidity, temperature, connect and send this information information to an online platform and make this data public. But what's interesting, interesting about this is that the hardware is open, the data is open, and the knowledge of how this data is captured and broadcasted is owned by the citizen. So the citizen becomes part of the city infrastructure. It's an active producer of information, and therefore they own that information. Uh, and it's not a corporation, it is not a government that is telling them how to do things, but it's actually citizens being empowered through technology in order to transform their society. This is a small example of uh, what or which are the things that we can do inside of PubNet. You, you take that when you think about you know small energy generators, water filters, um, the recycle you know the units to recycle plastic and turn it into raw materials, and you go and you go on and you go on and you you then can imagine that really like a small projects or, or many people connected together can make more things that you know big corporations trying to control, to control everything. So we need to make more of this. We need to provide people the tools and the means to actually be active uh, transformer of, of their realities. Otherwise, we will be always working for someone. Yeah. And last question. This year, FabLab Festival theme is FabLab are changing life. So according to you, yeah. in what way FabLab are changing life and maybe the world? For me, it's different to, to think about it because uh, this, is, this is my life. <laughs> uh, to so transform your life. I, can, I cannot imagine me doing anything else. It's like, uh, it's, you know, this is the world as I understand it. It's, uh, you know, working with creative people and being connected with the world and uh, developing anything we think it should exist, turn it into real, into real things. Um, I think that what is, 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 uh, is happening or what we have seen is how the, you know, the power of being able to make things by yourself is actually, it, it changed totally the perception of how you interface with reality. Um, I, I put always this example. No? Uh, one of the very first workshop we, workshops we organized was about teaching kids how to make their own skateboards. Yeah, right. uh, and I, I remember when I was a kid, a teenager, I had to get good grades, and then the reward from my family was to give me a skateboard. So I had to tell my mom that it was good, and so they would buy me. I had to manipulate my mom, cry, tell her I wanted it. These kids, that they just learn how to make the skateboard. They, <laughs> so they don't yeah. have to convince or to manipulate anyone. They just have to go and put their time in making it happen. So do things by themselves. I think that's fundamental. That's a big funny moment that, that you have when you know when you make a circuit board and it works. When you build your own website, when you can 3D print uh, a piece to fix something that you broke. Uh, that's when you realize. Uh, you know, these small tools that seem to be for geeks, they I mean, if you think about the, the wider implications, it could be really not only changing the life of individuals, but actually they could change everything. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>